jump into the monitor. Monitors allows us to see what the robot is seeing as well as being able to control it freely. In order to go and start using it, you can see that there's a lot of different things going on on the menu. So on the top left, we have an exit button. So we click that, the robot will leave its charge base station. This will allow access to control the robot as essentially an RC car. So I can go ahead and rotate it to the left. I can move it forward. I can move, kind of glide it about as it, it does have omnidirectional with its specific wheels. Um, and then on the bottom left, you have the capability to take a picture. So we can go ahead and just bring it towards us like this. There we are. And then I can take a picture by pressing the picture button. And then I can also record too by hitting the record button. Now this is all being stored in the local data uh, built into our specific robot. So if I click on the top left here, there's a photo button. I can click on local library and this will show you exactly what we've captured. So in this case here, we have the photo that we took and you can see it's actually a pretty good quality photo. I can zoom in and control that. And then I also have my video which is also a good quality video. So if you click on cloud library here, you can go and order that service where the robot will connect directly to the cloud, allowing you to go ahead and have access to this stuff later. So one of the cool things about the Scout is that it does have a cloud service. So the cloud service is free for up to a month, so it's great to go ahead and try out. Now this allows you to go ahead and get push notifications. Uh, for instance, if we set up a motion detect, for example, and it detects a motion, it'll notify us right away. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can go into uh, monitor and then click on motion settings. So obviously this kind of gives you all the breakdown of what you can detect and what you can't detect. So for instance, a person, a pet, dog, cat, zone. Now the zone, you can uh, essentially create a boundary. So you can go and adjust this based on what you want it to detect or not. So in this case, I'll just do directly in the center and click OK. Um, and then from there, it's ready. Now, for instance, if I'm just kind of in the main menu here and I put my hand in front of the robot like this, there you go. Now it says motion detected. Uh, and I'll also get an email for that from that push notification as well. Uh, and I can click on this notification and watch the video of the motion that it detected. So in this case here, it detected my hand. So that's actually really cool that it's able to do that. So yeah, it just kind of gives you an idea of what the capabilities with this robot. Obviously the cloud service is great. Uh, it's a great addition to the robot, it essentially complements the robot overall. Now it also has a speaker button. So if we click this here, we can hear what the robot is hearing and it'll replay that back to our phone so we can communicate to it if we need to. Now it also has a microphone button so I can speak directly to it through my phone. If you ever have to speak to someone through it, you can use it like that. Now in the center of the screen, we do have a little map. So this here is showing exactly where the robot has been, kind of creating a trail or a path, which we'll see in just a little bit. On the bottom right, we have a few different settings in terms of smart detect. Now this particular robot has motion detect. So if it does detect a human walking by or a pet or a specific zone that you're in, it will go ahead and notify you. Now this will work specifically on the charge station, so just keep that in mind. So click back here. Uh, and that is that in terms of movement. Now it does have a return to home button. Now, this does this autonomously, so it is actually quite accurate for what it is. All right, so you can see how it's kind of sensing where it's supposed to go and it'll line itself up. Essentially, I believe it reverses itself onto the charge station. It's that simple. After we return back to our base station, you can go ahead and create a path for the robot to scout, hence the scout robot. So I'll click path here and I can click the plus sign on the bottom left. Now I can name this path. So since we're on a table, we'll just call this table for now, just to show you how this works. And I'll click OK. The robot will leave its base station and now it's beginning its path. From there, we'll be able to control the robot and create our path manually. So move forward like this. Uh, then we can go ahead and turn left. We'll go forward again. Uh, we'll rotate itself. Kind of go like in a triangle area. There you are. And from there, you can either back up back onto the charger or you can click home base and it'll automatically return back to its uh, base station. I just love this return to home feature. It's actually so cool how it does this. Voila. Now if I click on patrol, uh, patrol allows us to go and schedule our paths. So in this case here, it says table. 
and it shows you exactly what this robot is seeing in real time as well. Now, if I click on schedule, I can create my own schedule and assign that to our robot. So if I wanted to, per se, follow the table path, so I'll click on table. Now I just received a notification that scouts start patrolling at a specific time following our table route. So you can see how scout is doing this all autonomously and it's kind of trying to see and give you back any feedback if necessary if it detects anything. All right, so now that's not patrolling, it's gonna return back to its base station. 